Hello, Facebook Live. Uh, this is Heather McManus of Collaborate to Win. I am here every week, every Thursday, to tell you more about uh, product knowledge to help you be able to um, sell products to your clients, know more about each thing, um, and uh, tips and tricks to, to make the client understand better and you understand better if, if, uh, if you don't know everything about product. And they don't teach you a lot in school about product, so I think this is a good topic for designers. So today, our topic is high-end design, true luxury products. And I think that there are a lot of designers who I talk to that say, um, you know, I don't have the clients for that. Um, I wouldn't know how to sell it. I don't know why it's so expensive. And so I wanted to talk about this today because I want to change your mindset about it first off. So, um, so I'm going to start by going over all things high end. Okay. Because there's, there's high end products in every aspect of our lives. So um, recently I was watching a uh, Netflix special with my husband about um, hyper cars and he's a car guy. He's very into uh, Formula One and all that stuff. He's gotten me into it. I have a favorite driver. Uh, so, you know, we, we go up and we watch um, up in Montreal and, and see all of that. And, and it's, it's the high end world of race car driving. Um, so we watched this Netflix special about a Porsche. Well, it's, it wasn't about the Porsche, but my husband said something so like, wow, that I wrote it down and I thought I got to share this with people because I knew this was the topic we were going to talk about this week. Hi, Sally Brown. Thanks for joining. Um, so, <laughs> so, so this Porsche comes on, uh, it's a 918 Spider. Um, and if you don't know anything about cars, this is going to shock you, okay? So it's $800,000 for this car. One car, Porsche, $800,000. And my husband says, that's actually a really good value. Total pant straight face. He, he means this. He is serious. That's a really good value. $800,000. Dollars for a car. Okay. So if somebody like my husband can say that, um, trust me, your clients say this kind of thing all the time. And it, it so so that struck me. So I started thinking about luxury industries in general and how um we all aspire to have those things, and sometimes we will treat ourselves to that really high end. Um, whatever it is. It could be lipstick. It could be, you know, the car. It could be the shoes. It could be a million. It could be the furniture. It could, you know, and, and so that's what I wanted to start with, to try to shift your mindset from ever thinking that you'll never have a client that would go for something really high end, something really special and tailored because, you know, that $800,000 Porsche, there are reasons why that is so expensive, right? And you're not just going to buy a different Porsche that's, you know, the commuter that you're, you could say is the same. So, um, so I'm going to show you one of my splurges. Okay. So this, this was a, a big deal for me. I got myself a Louis Vuitton this year and, uh, I, I didn't grow up with money. So this for me is a big deal. And what I love about this purse, it's so lightweight, even though it's leather, it, it doesn't weigh a lot. I have so many purses that weigh like 30 pounds with nothing in them because they're just made, you know, kind of poorly and they're heavy. Another thing I love about this, this right here, this is like wearing a, a sneaker tread so that it actually stays on your shoulder and doesn't fall down constantly. And it's these little details, this, that make quality pieces worth more and valuable. And the, you know, the stitching on it is beautiful. The, the design is beautiful. 
So beyond the name and that name recognition, what you wind up with is some quality piece that will last longer than other pieces um, and just functions better. So that's the world of high end. There are um, reasons for it and there are places where we allow ourselves to splurge and places where uh, we think, oh no, it shouldn't cost that much and I'm not gonna buy that. So I wanna open you up to the idea that your clients should have some really high-end stuff in their houses, even if it's one piece. One spectacular, gorgeous piece that and the rest of the room is maybe, you know, less than higher, you know, hierarchy stuff that um, really stands out. So, um, so hopefully this will help you understand some reasons why high-end furniture is so expensive how you can use it, and some of the manufacturers that you should know. So, um, I wanna talk about, and you know what? When somebody says um, they want to buy that high-end thing, they're buying the story behind the product and the dream of the product. So knowing why something is high-end is the how you sell the high-end, because the client wants to hear where it was made, how it was made, who it was made by. They want the whole pedigree story of why they would spend this money for a really nice piece, some really gorgeous statement piece. Um, so that brings me to this really funny word. Okay, you ready? This is really funny. The word fine. The word fine never actually means fine. Fine is supposed to be like meh, right? But it never means that. If you ask, if a woman says to you that she's fine, you're in trouble, right? Any woman listening to this, you could deny it if you want. If you tell your man you're fine, he is in trouble. He better start apologizing and complimenting you right away. Fine does not mean fine when you're talking woman terms. When you talk the word fine in furniture, it actually means excellent. It means amazing. So why they came up with fine furniture, I don't know, but it actually means really amazing furniture. So um, I've noticed a few companies using that word that have no business using that word because they're not fine furniture. And I think it's a marketing tool that is hoping that they can trick you into thinking that they're better than what it is. Um, and generally speaking, if you have to tell someone it's luxury, it's not. Um, if you have to communicate that, if you think about it, if, um, if you've watched you know, any commercial on TV that's talking about the watch, the whatever, the really high-end stuff. They don't need to say, this is luxury, because it just is luxury and you should know that. And so be, be aware of companies that will overly use the word fine, because they, they may not be. Okay, so um, I have some notes, so that's why I keep looking over here. All right, so the top of the food chain in really fine furniture is Cargus. They're the top of that food chain. Um, and they were recently purchased a couple years back by Kindle, who's also top of the food chain. And they also own Council. So those three companies are under the same umbrella of really, like, the top. These are the Bentleys of furniture. So they're completely handmade. I would uh, recommend you go to their website and watch some of their videos because they show you the true craftsmen. They're like artists, really. Um, they carve the wood by hand. They hand paint things. They're actual artists making each piece by hand, taking a very long time to do this. So watch some of those videos on their website and you will get a much deeper appreciation 
for the art and the furniture that they are creating. Um, so those are a couple of the names at the top, top of the food chain. Then you've got um, E.J. Victor and Baker and then Century. And even Century has um, like their really high end price point, their middle price point, and then what they consider like the, the lesser price point. That's um, so even like within a company, you might have different tiers. Um, who else is in there? I would say Hickory Chair is still pretty high end. And there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of others too. So, but those are kind of like your, your big high end um, companies. Uh, so what makes those so special is the materials that they use and the people that make them. And where it's made too. I mean, you can get really amazing, gorgeous stuff made in Italy, made in France, made in Japan. There are companies all over the world that have exquisite furniture that um, you can see even when you go to High Point. Um, so it's it's good to look at it. It's good to get yourself familiar with it. Open the drawer, feel inside, look all around the piece. You can tell by looking at really high-end stuff that you're looking at something gorgeous. And um, so the the latest magazine that I got was uh, Traditional Home, and this just struck me, so I wanted to share it. This, um, <laughs> this Baker sofa, has so many curves and lines. You've got that tufted back, the gorgeous foot. It's just, it's so beautiful and so different that that's what you get when you do high-end furniture. They come up with designs off the bat that are not like anybody else's. This is not a three over three standard rolled arm cushion, um, you know, sofa. So. It's uh, it, and it's not going to go in every house. That's not that's not going to work in many many houses. But the house that it does, it's going to be amazing. So um, so that's the difference that you get. And I don't know if you can tell, but the the piece underneath the sofa has it looks like book match mahogany. And I'm going to go over what the hell that means. So this piece here. Probably also made by Baker since it's in the same thing. I don't know if you can tell. So the materials that they use, um, they're using much higher end, rarer wood species. Mahogany is more of a rare species of wood. It's gonna cost more just to buy the material. Um, any metals that they would use are gonna be real metals, high end metals, not, um, I don't know, lead painted to look like something else. Um, cause there's plenty of ways to have the look, but make it cheaper. So when you go with the really high end stuff, it's true brass, it's real, it's real metals. Um, so mahogany is one of those, um, higher end woods that they, they tend to, to gravitate towards because the patterns that you can get in mahogany are just stunning. If you cut the wood just right, you can get this, what they call, um, flame mahogany pattern. And I have images to show you, actually, so that it's educational. Okay. Also, burl is a, a very expensive wood to apply to a piece, and you're only going to see it in the high-end stuff. So here is, hopefully this works. This is burl. It almost looks like, um, like you're looking at a crater on the moon. This, this texture is so cool and happens in nature. Okay, so here is, this is a piece that's been done in Burl. And this has been book matched. So what I mean when I say that is that they've, they've cut the tree in these pieces that are thin. And so you cut here and you cut here. So now you've got two pieces of wood, right? And the craftsman takes these two pieces and butts them up so that the veins match up, line up, 
and make this book matched like um, like butterfly wings so that the the grain is continuing on and looking I mean stunning really different stuff now this is interesting this is why it costs so much this here hopefully you can see that that gnarly piece of tree that is where burl comes from these weird lumpy tumory things that grow on trees that's how they get burl so most of the tree is just normal wood and then you've got this little gnarly patch that doesn't even happen on all of the trees right it happens on some trees sometimes and they're going to be different shapes and odd sizes and each one's going to be completely different because it's made from nature so they cut these pieces and slice that bit of of stuff to create burl so you'll never get like an enormous piece of burl you know you're always going to have these little pieces that they then um like patchwork together to make up um a piece and similar to burl is curly maple so obviously it's made from maple and same thing where you get these weird spots is where you can find the curly maple things sometimes it's where um like a new branch will, will spread out and that area will have some interesting pattern that they can use so here is curly maple it's even harder i think more rare to find a curly maple so this is a small little jewelry box and you're gonna find curly maple done sparingly and done on small pieces because it's such a rare wood to find and if you look at that pattern it's just so beautiful so different it looks like water um you know like the caribbean ocean right when you walk in it's it's really cool really unique and this piece they they almost didn't put any stain on it they kept it really raw and just polyurethane um sanding it forever i'm sure and put a protective finish on it and because it has such a light finish you can really appreciate the grain pattern that's on that versus this is also curly maple this is a tabletop so this is like somebody's kitchen table done in a curly maple now here they did a much darker finish so the highs and lows you you're gonna miss some of it you're kind of losing out a little bit on the highs and lows and you'll notice some of the boards have more pattern and others have less pattern and that's just the way you know you cut the wood sometimes you're gonna get um, pieces with a lot of that wavy pattern and then sometimes you'll get something that looks more like a regular piece of wood and then a little bit of it so that's just some of the characteristics okay here is flame mahogany see how it looks kind of like like if you were watching a fire it looks like it's on fire and that's the true color of mahogany it's very orangey red um, you know in some spots it's lighter and darker it has a lot of movement which is why it's so beautiful and I think a lot of companies these days take mahogany wood and put super dark finishes on it so that you I to me it's like a waste it's like what you're like painting it black if you're going with like an ebony finish on a mahogany wood you lose all of that spectacular graining I mean but people do it because I don't know because they have the money to <laughs> Um, okay, so here's a beautiful antique piece where on the front of it, they did the mahogany in flame and it's, it looks like a painting in how they did that. Okay, here's inlay. This is another way that uh, the price of your furniture is going to go up. Look at that beautiful inlay. That's not painted or stained. Those are little pieces of wood that have been cut out to little shapes and then put together like you would um, a collage of, with paper, but they do it with wood. It's amazing. And on Jonathan Charles's website, you can see them actually do all of this hand stuff um, in, their, in their videos. So check out that website too and watch those videos because it's 
really gives you an appreciation. Okay, so here is a piece by Carcass. It's a dresser. I'm sure that this is real brass. It's definitely mahogany because you can tell by the wood. And if you look at this piece, it may not be your style, right? It's not what's currently trending, but um, you can tell that that bottom piece here where the foot is, kick plate area, it's all curves. There's nothing straight about that. That takes skill. And if you look at the top, they didn't just put a square top on it. It's it curves around the edge, it goes in the front, bows out, comes back in. It's sexy, it's sleek. Everything about it is curvy. There's no like straight lines. So much harder to do that than to just make some boxes. Real craftsman people working on this. Okay, so this, um, again, not par currently popular. I have a feeling we're coming back to the traditional soon. Um, this is another desk by Cargus. So if you notice all this beautiful inlay, um, take a look at the leg, how it simply tapers down, and then they put a little detail on the bottom. All of these little drawers take so much time to make, and I'm sure that there are lots of little secret compartments and cool, amazing stuff um, for this writing desk. Now, um, Kindle has purchased Cargus. So Kindle has, was always a little bit more um, less traditional. Like Cargus has every time period imaginable. If you have a client that is, well, I want Heppel White. I want, you know, Louis the Fifteenth. They have all of those categories. Um, whereas Kindle was always a little bit more fashion forward, kind of a modern take on things. So I found this piece. On their website and this is using inlay in this checkerboard pattern with these awesome knobs and a, a white um, bordered cabinetry check this detail out it's really cool so you can still have very high-end very beautiful things and have a modern take on it and um, and it's stunning and you can tell you can just tell by looking at something when it's made well and it's high end. You may not have to know exactly how it's all made and what species of wood it is, but you can tell by looking at it when it's really stunning. So those are the examples I wanted to share with you. Um, and I would encourage you to find out more about the high end because honestly, your clients. Um, probably wanted. If they're in a position to hire an interior designer, they have a little more money than you and I. Our clients do not have the same budget that we do. And I'm, I'm speaking in broad terms. There may be some of you watching right now who are trust fund babies who have like tons of money. You grow up with it. All your clients have money and, and it's, it's not an issue for you. But I do find that a lot of interior designers have these money gremlins in your mind that kind of talk you out of even showing the high end to your client when that's really why they're coming to you. They want to see the special thing that they're not going to see in the store. They want to hear about the story behind Cargus and how it's still made in Michigan and how, you know, it's been in business for, I don't even know, probably 150 years and that, you know, it's X generation and, you know, like the whole history of the pieces that you sell, they want that story. They want to know that stuff. And trust me, when, when their friends walk in and maybe it's the entry piece, right? When you walk in that you, you know, spent a little more on and gave them something, gave them an option that was higher end, very different, really cute, beautiful stuff, their friends are gonna walk in and say, oh my God, that table's gorgeous. And that client will say to them, well, yes, my designer got that for me. It's from this company and it does this and it's that and blah, 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 blah. And they will love being able to share the story of that piece of furniture with their friends and plug you in as the designer that, that was able to find that piece for them. So I encourage you to 
think high end, even if it's just one piece in a room, one piece um, in a house, or just go a little above what you're comfortable with. Check out some things. Don't eliminate it because you think, my client's not going to afford that. They don't have the budget for it. If you educate them and tell them, this is why it's better. This is why it's special. Especially if they can see it in person. And I know that's just unbelievable difficult these days. Um, if, you, if you do take them to a showroom, it's... Uh, hard to find and you want to not use up someone's time that way so that that does make it hard but um, seeing these pieces in person um, it really does sell it because even if you can get like a little sample of what the wood is or bigger samples you know of, of what the flame mahogany would do it's just so breathtaking when you see it describing it and looking at an image on in a you know website it really doesn't do it justice and actually, that's a good point. Um, I'm sure all of you get the Pottery Barn catalog. And Pottery Barn is um, higher middle of the road furniture in their price point. In the quality level, it is low to medium price uh, quality, but they are charging a lot more for it. And um, this happens every time I've ever sold it, looked at it, you know, gone to the store. What they show you in the catalog is so disappointing when you look at it at the store. It doesn't matter if it's the lamp, the bedding, the furniture. It's just like, what? This, how is that that? They do an amazing job on their catalog, styling things, making it look so much higher end than it really is. And then you see it in person, and it is a true disappointment. I gotta say, with every company I sell to my clients, even like the just good level, even just, just that good, it's always so much more impressive in person than it ever was in a catalog or online or the little sample I showed them to help, you know, sell it because I don't have a showroom to, to bring them to. I don't, I'm not, and I'm not going to waste someone else's time bringing them to the New York showroom or to anyone else's furniture store around here. I'm very sensitive to that. People work on commission, and you don't want to waste their time. So when I sell it, I'm selling it from the idea, the story, of why it's going to work all together in their room. And it's always so much more impressive. And when the client sees it, they're like, wow. I mean, I knew I liked it, but I love it. Like, this is so amazing. And when you work in the high, high-end stuff, the really expensive stuff, it, it knocks your socks off. It takes your breath away. Like, it's just, wow. So when you're at high point, if you go um, at all, whether it be spring or fall or, or any time, don't eliminate the high-end. Go check it out. Go see it. Go feel it. Just, just go appreciate it. Um, and, and think you know what, I'm going to sell my clients some really nice stuff. And also, if you do, imagine how amazing your photographs are going to be. Because we all want to professionally photograph our rooms, right? So if you've got a really standout, stunning, high-end piece in there, that's definitely something you're going to accessorize. And that could be, you know, maybe the new marketing photo that you use on, like, everything. So um, next week... I will come back and tell you more about products. I'm going to do these live Facebook group things um, every single Thursday at 1 o'clock. So I hope you continue to join me. And thank you, everyone who was here. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Amy. So glad you guys were able to, uh, to be here and listen to me talk. <laughs> I hope you learned something. And um, really, I mean, get the money gremlins out of your mind because they are not they, your money story is not your client's money story. They have so much more money than you, and they are. if you show them the thing that's spectacular, chances are they're going to say, you know, let's just do it. <laughs> so happy selling, and uh, next week I'm going to talk about the absolute opposite end of the um, money spectrum in furniture. So we're going to talk about the level that's usually called good.
We're not even going to discuss garbage that winds up in a landfill in two to three years. We're going to start with good or lower end. And then the week after, we can talk about the middle of the road um, furniture companies and, and the differences between them. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I will see you next week. Bye!